Hey, everybody, it's John from The Hustle Daily Show. Before we get into the news today, did you know that HubSpot launched an AI chatbot that helps you build awesome campaigns at scale with just a few prompts? It's called Campaign Assistant, and it's a totally free to use AI tool that will transform the way that you build marketing campaigns at scale. And the best part, it works seamlessly with all of HubSpot's marketing and sales tools to scale your output across email, social, and more. So AI your way into the most effective campaigns yet at HubSpot.com slash campaign dash assistant. Howdy, folks. It is Tuesday, July 19th. I'm Jacob Cohen here with Rob Letterst, and this is the Hustle Daily Show. On today's show, TikTok has risen as an unlikely challenger to Google search. We're going to discuss how that happened, how it could change Google and more. But before we get to that, here's a quick rundown on some of the latest news in business and tech. Let's get crack lagging. Right, Rob, what are you looking at today? All right. So the first thing that I'm looking at is Amazon and their push to make delivery drones a thing. A little while back, we wrote about how they're going to be piloting delivery drones in a California town called Lockwood later this year. Right. And they just announced the second city that they're going to roll the drones out. And it's College Station, Texas. So how will this work? So Amazon is going to partner with Texas A&M on this effort. Basically, shoppers in the area will get access to thousands of items from Amazon through these drone deliveries. And ultimately, like the way that it works is once a drone essentially picks up the package, they fly to somebody's house, they essentially descend into their backyard, and then they hover to what Amazon is calling a safe height, Mm. drop the package, and then basically go on their merry way. So it seems pretty straightforward. It seems pretty easy. And I think you called this out, but Walmart's kind of already doing this, right? Yeah. I saw you were writing this story and I was like, hey, I've seen some videos of Walmart already doing this online. Like, (laughs) I was looking into it a little bit more. They have a few towns already where they're delivering things by drone. But by the end of this year, they're going to cover, I think, up to 4 million households in terms of where they can deliver things via drone. And, you know, some of the videos are pretty funny. We linked to in the newsletter today. One is just showing how they load these drones and send them off. One is showing like a botched delivery from someone's backyard where the drone dropped it in a tree. (laughs) And then then I saw a great one where some woman was just chilling in her backyard and the drone drops off a rotisserie chicken. Amazing. (laughs) From Walmart. (laughs) Yeah. Four million households. That's pretty impressive, honestly. That's a lot of people getting drone deliveries. And that's the thing that I'm really curious about this is like... Do people really want drone deliveries? Amazon's been working on this for a while. Like we were talking about how in 2015, they released a video about it. I think the project started in 2013. Mm -hmm. In 2017, I think they spent 30 seconds total. So they probably spent like $5 million on a Super Bowl ad, 10 seconds of which was (laughs) all about drone delivery. And here we are five years later and nobody's really had a drone delivery from Amazon yet. Yeah, But that's because they've had issues. Like the FAA, I think, was holding off on giving them approval for this because they've had like all these crashes. They had one crash that created a 20 acre brush fire in Oregon. Uh, Look at that. How nice. It's like, oh, how did your entire farm burn down? Oh, it's actually an Amazon delivery drone. Like, Delivering just really my rotisserie like- chicken. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> the irony. But anyway, the drone deliveries are coming, and I don't know. We'll see who's next. All right. In other news, Christie's, the prominent auction house, announced it's branching into tech investing. The company launched an in-house venture capital arm called Christie's Ventures. Very unique name. <laughs> It'll focus on art and crypto startups. As to how successful they'll be, time will tell. Up next, Delta agreed to purchase 100 Boeing 737 MAX jets with an option to purchase 30 more. The deal's worth about $13.5 billion before discounts and offers a vote of confidence in Boeing's model, which underwent a two-year grounding after those two fatal crashes. Moving along, Snap introduced Snap for Web, which lets users send snaps and chat with friends from their desktop. The feature will be available to Snapchat Plus subscribers before rolling out to all users. Reminds me of just WhatsApp Web or iMessage, which I use both of those on my desktop. So totally. pretty smart move here. What else we got? Amazon launched a big redesign for Prime Video, including new navigation, a top 10 list, and a new interface. It was not exactly known for its picturesque UI, and the new designs have it fitting right in uh, up there with Netflix, HBO, Max, and Disney+, Plus. so that's nice for them. Speaking of Netflix, the company announces its second quarter earnings results today. Previously projected a loss of 2 million subscribers for the period, so it's going to be the talk of town later today and tomorrow. 
So be sure to keep an eye out on that. We will be doing so. And with that, let's dive into the search wars. Okay, so for our loyal listeners, I am a millennial. JC, you are very firmly planted in Gen Z. You have been touting TikTok to me for a very long time. I still have not downloaded the app. (laughs) And now apparently TikTok is taking on Google search. Tell me more about this. Is this for real? It it appears it is for real. And the reason it really appears like it's for real is because this new information that's coming out is coming out of Google itself. So wow. Prabhakar Raghavan, a senior vice president at Google, I believe he's in charge of Google search and a bunch of other really big parts of the company. Uh, he was at a conference last week in Colorado and he was talking about Google search and he said, and I quote, you know, almost 40% of young people, when they're looking for a place for lunch, they don't go to Google Maps or search. They go to TikTok or Instagram. This is like a massive statement. Yeah, it He's really basically is. saying when you look up a restaurant in town, when you look up a place to eat, a bar, young people are not going to Google to do that. They're going to TikTok or Instagram to do that. When I read that, I was like, yeah, no shit, I do that. <laughs> so here's what he's so saying. So you actually do. You go to TikTok or Instagram to search for a hundred percent. Wow. And I'll tell you why. Because when you go to Google and search for something like Cool Bar in Boston, for instance, you're greeted with 125 million results. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know how it says how many results there are? 125 million results. You have a map with hundreds of spots on it. You have reviews and everything. It's very useful information, but it's like a ton of information. Overwhelming. It's a ton of SEO-driven information. It's overwhelming. Information overload. When you go on TikTok and you search this exact same thing, cool bar in Boston, you see a nice selection of quick, popular, fun clips of normal people you know, with music in the background, highlighting some cool Boston bars. So the question is very simple. Would you rather comb through 125 million results or watch a catchy 13 second video? (laughs) That's really interesting because you can like kind of get the vibe of the bar just from watching a TikTok, right? 100%. Like, what are you doing on Google? You end up looking at whatever, clicking on the map, like looking at the bar's name. You can see some stock pictures when nobody's actually there. Yeah, exactly. Like, that's actually a really good point. Yeah. So this may look bad for Google, but if I'm this senior vice president, here's why I'm sleeping well at night. The first reason is because Google faces a lot of antitrust scrutiny, obviously. They do indeed. Big tech. So the 40% number, the 40% of young people that are going to TikTok instead of Google is a great defensive argument for Google to use to defend itself against antitrust scrutiny. They have their own website where they highlight all these different stats defending themselves against antitrust scrutiny. (laughs) Things like 55% of people start product searches on Amazon, not Google. And so this fits right in nicely next to those stats. That's kind of hilarious. Like they have a whole website (laughs) that's basically saying like, hey, this is why we're not as great as you think we are. They're saying like, if you're concerned about us in the competitive landscape, here's why you shouldn't be worried. But yeah, it's kind of ironic. But the second reason is because Google obviously owns YouTube, which has YouTube Shorts, That's which right. is their TikTok clone. A lot of people are looking at YouTube Shorts now. It's grown pretty quickly. And he has YouTube Shorts at his disposal to incorporate into search if he so desires. So Google's actually already worked on deals to index Instagram and TikTok clips and put them into Google search results when you look certain things up. So I would expect parts of the Google search experienced aspects of it to look more like a TikTok feed in the future when you look up something like Cool Bar in Boston. And so what's this all mean for TikTok? Well, what about TikTok itself? They're going to find themselves facing more scrutiny, probably. Their parent company, ByteDance, is Chinese. Recently obtained audio recordings, I think BuzzFeed got hold of those, confirmed Chinese management effectively has unfettered access to U.S. user data. That's right. Despite all the improvements they're trying to make. And despite all this, users are spending more time on TikTok than Instagram and Facebook combined. The average U.S. kid spending almost 100 minutes a day on TikTok. That is crazy. That doesn't take a genius to see why U.S. officials are concerned about Chinese companies' grip on an algorithm that owns so much of our time. Right. Because with the flick of a switch, they can make the slightest adjustments that theoretically could make people in America start seeing videos that are negative in some way right. or associated with some kind of negative thing. So that's what people are worried about in the government mostly. But Right. You could spark some crazy TikTok challenge that like ends up hurting yes. <laughs> young Americans' mental health or something like that, which I'm not saying China has directed, but that's definitely happened, I feel like. For sure. The election's coming up relatively soon. You know, they could be playing a lot more kind of divisive political totally. content, you know, stuff like that. And now with TikTok also rising as this kind of search engine of choice, I think things could get even more interesting. 
So we'll see what happens. Question for you, though. So have you used YouTube Shorts? I have not called myself an active user, but I have watched YouTube Shorts. Yeah. Does it like look and feel like TikTok? I mean, it's designed basically the same way, right? but it doesn't feel the same. I would say Instagram Reels has almost a closer feel to TikTok. Right. But there's something about TikTok that still is like, it just has the it factor that the others haven't found just yet. I also think it's like still at a point where it's cooler to use TikTok than to use Instagram Reels and YouTube Shorts. Totally. Bada bing, bada boom. That is going to do it for us today. Thanks for tuning into the Hustle Daily Show. We're a proud part of the HubSpot Podcast Network. Our editor today is Robert Hartwig, and our executive producer is Darren Clark. If you liked what you heard, we've got a lot more tech and business coverage in our newsletter. If you're not subscribed, go get yourself signed up at thehustle.com. I'm Jacob Cohen here with Rob Litters. Have a great Tuesday. We'll see you tomorrow. Hey, guys. If you listen to the Hustle Daily Show on Google Podcasts, we want to let you know that the option will no longer be available pretty soon. Google is sunsetting its podcast app sometime in early 2024 in favor of YouTube Music, and we want to give you a heads up before it's too late since that time's almost here. The Hustle Daily Show is available everywhere and anywhere that you listen to podcasts like Apple Podcasts and Spotify. If you're using YouTube Music, we are there as well. If you're an Android fan, there are plenty of apps like Overcast, Pocket Casts, Player FM, and more. So just search for us wherever you decide to listen to your favorite podcasts.